horizontal asymptotes we covered way back when when we were in the uh, rational functions unit and if you remember as um, when the <laughs> I guess if you think about the the bubble theorem when the numerator and denominator have the same degree then basically you just peel off the coefficients and whatever y is equal to whatever's left over is what y is equal to I should say so y is equal to four-fifths and then when the, in, in the second problem here we see that the bigger bubbles on the bottom meaning the degree of the polynomial is bigger than the denominator so therefore we have um, uh, y equals zero then so that that fraction is not going to go anywhere as x values get really big so therefore y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote and then when we have a bigger bubble up on top we see that this fraction is going to float up up and away to infinity and therefore we have no horizontal asymptotes okay and then in the next part of this uh, next chart here we see we're trying to find the oh I messed up darn it uh, forget to change that forget to change the uh, h to a v right there so we have vertical asymptotes my apologies for that uh, vertical asymptote then as we uh, if we think back to that same section I was referring to for horizontal asymptotes we were talking about if we uh, if we find a zero in our denominator which when x is equal to one we see that the denominator is zero and if we can't cancel that uh, factor then that's in fact when we're dealing with rational functions now okay so that's in fact the uh, vertical asymptote for this function Okay, so for the second one, we can see we can factor x plus 1, x minus 1, and so we see that we can cancel the x minus 1s, and when we cancel the x minus 1s, we're left, uh, we're left with this x equals negative 4 as our vertical asymptote. We should note that x equals 1 is not a part of the domain of this function, and so since we could cancel the factor, we see that we would have a hole at x equals 1. 1 and a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. And then for the third function we see we can't cancel this factor of x minus 3 and x equaling 3 would be a, a discontinuity of this function and that discontinuity would be an infinite discontinuity and that vertical asymptote is x equals 3 just like the first problem. Okay. Problem number 5 it might you might be thinking well, why are we doing this here well I mean as far as the first row because f prime is equal to zero for each one of these but I just wanted to illustrate that there are only four possibilities for the shape of the graph of a function at the at the moment when f prime is equal to zero or at the place on the graph so we can see we either have a max a min or neither and the two uh, two shapes of the graph for the neither would be right here in which uh, the function could be increasing or the function f could be decreasing but either way we have a horizontal tangent line right there where the graph levels out for just a, a moment an instant okay however we haven't really talked too much about what happens at those critical points and uh, specifically what happens with f double prime and f double prime we can see uh, if you well when you understand what f double prime means and just a, a quick review of that f double prime meaning the slope of f prime okay and uh... well i guess that's not really um, hold on a second i just had a, a random thought but i don't want to go in that direction so i'll, I'll back up uh... f double prime we can see we we, know, we understand the shape of f again these are f, f of x all these graphs uh, the shape of f when it looks like a frown that would be f is concave down and so therefore f double prime would be less than zero okay when it uh, f of x is shaped like a cup we see that f is concave up and therefore f double prime is positive and then um, we can see that f double prime changes from negative to positive okay and so f double prime when f double prime changes from negative to positive we would see that f double prime 
for a continuous function like you see here would be equal to zero. Okay, and then the same thing over here, f double prime positive to f double prime negative, that would be where we have an inflection point, and that's where um, the f double prime is going to be either equal to zero or does not exist. In this case, f double prime would equal zero. See, we have the shape of a uh, polynomial function, and in polynomial functions, we don't ever have any sharp points, so we would um, we would definitely always have a uh, f double prime equaling zero in those cases. Okay, so uh, back or down here to problem number six, a, b, and c, we see we have geometric series, infinite geometric series, as these series go all the way to infinity, and we're trying to figure out number one if the series converge and number two uh, if they do converge what do they converge to and uh, I would like to point out here that when you see the summation notation here it just means you're adding up a, a number of terms in this case an infinite number but when we replace k with the first value for k it says we replace k with zero we get the first term being three times one fourth to the zero power, which would be just three, okay, plus three times one fourth to the first power, which would be three fourths, okay, plus dot dot dot. Well, we should be able to note here that the first term is is three, and the common ratio is one fourth, and so if we if we write that down, a equals three and common ratio is one fourth then we should be able to note that since the common ratio, and I should probably put this, the absolute value of r is the absolute value of one-fourth, which is one-fourth, which is less than one. Okay. An infinite geometric series will converge, if you remember, when the absolute value of the ratio is less than one. Okay. And what does it converge to? Well, the sum of an infinite geometric series is always the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio and so we see that the first term is 3 the common ratio again is 1 fourth and 3 divided by let's see that would be 1 minus 1 fourth would be 3 fourths so we have 3 divided by 3 fourths which I write as 3 times 4 thirds and so we're going to get a sum of 4 so the sum of that infinite geometric series is four. Okay. Well, I'll let you do the work for this next one, just based on the description for how to do part A. We see that the first term, A, first term A would be when k is zero, so we have one half to the first power, and negative one to the zero is one, so one half to the first power is just one half. Well, the common ratio. Uh, if you look at the next term, one, uh, it went or when k is equal to one, we have one fourth or one half squared, so one fourth multiplied by negative one. So the next term is uh, negative one fourth, which makes our common ratio negative one half. Okay, so that's a little trick there. Got to make sure you get that negative in there, and the sum then would be the first term one half over one minus negative one half which would make that 1 plus 1 half, or 3 halves. So we have 1 half divided by 3 halves, or times 2 thirds, and that would give us 1 third. Okay? I always hesitate because there's just so many places to make a silly error here. I've said that before and I've made an error in problems like that, but I'm looking again here. A is 1 half, and just to be sure, I shouldn't have done that, uh, just to be sure, uh, I wanted to make sure I did this right. If k is equal to 0, then we have 1 half to the 1 power. Okay, and then minus, uh, what's the next term? So negative 1 to the, to the first power is negative 1. That's where we get the minus. And then 1 half to the first power, or to the second power is 1 fourth. Okay, that makes the common ratio negative one-fourth divided by one-half which makes it negative one-half so the common ratio is negative one-half alright got that right
And then for this last problem here, uh, the first term is 1 16th, and the common ratio is negative 1 8th divided by 1 16th. Okay, and the common ratio then would be negative 1 8th times 16 over 1, and that makes negative 2. Okay, so that means that the common ratio, uh, the, sorry, the absolute value of the common ratio is equal to the absolute value of 2, which is 2, which is greater than 1. Okay, and the other two converged, and this one diverges. So therefore, this infinite geometric series diverges, therefore it doesn't have a sum. It just keeps getting bigger. And there we have it.